In this video, I will be teaching you about two basic trigonometric identities. So we come across the first identity when we divide sine of theta by cosine of theta. So we have sine of theta over cosine of theta. And just to recall what's happening, let's quickly draw our triangle. This is theta. We call this side O or opposite, this side adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So what we're taking over here is essentially O over H, which is sine of theta, divided by cosine of theta, which is A over H. And this simplifies to be O over H times H over A, which gives us a value of O over A. And if you recall, O over A is equal to tan of theta. Therefore, sine of theta over cosine of theta is equal to tan of theta. And this usually works out really nicely when we have to do more complicated equations involving sine and cosine. We come across our second identity when we square sine and cosine. So when we have sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, this is when we get our second identity. And I just like to clarify that sine squared of theta is the same thing as sine of theta whole squared. So plus cosine of theta whole squared. So this is equal to O over H whole squared plus A over H whole squared, which is equal to O squared over H squared plus A squared over H squared, which gives us O squared plus a squared over h squared. And using Pythagorean theorem, we get that o squared plus a squared is equal to h squared. So this over here ends up giving us h squared over h squared. And this is equal to 1. So what we end up getting is that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. And both of these uh, identities basically make your life much easier when you have to calculate um, stuff involving sine, cosine, and tangent. And memorizing both of these equations is very important. And that's because when we're dealing with questions involving identities, you usually have to, or what it consists of is being able to call upon these identities when you need them, and if you don't know them very well, you won't be able to recognize where you can use them. So let's say, for example, that sine squared of x is equal to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. And we have to solve for x, where 0 is less than or equal to x, and it's between zero and 360 degrees. So we can simplify this, we get sine squared of x is or minus two times sine of x times cosine of x is equal to zero. We can take sine of x common in both places. So we get sine of x times sine of x minus to cosine of x is equal to zero. And from this that we get that either sine of x is equal to zero or, excuse me, sine of x minus two cosine of x is equal to zero. Now using our identity, we can further simplify this equation over here. So by doing that, we get that sine of x is equal to 2 cosine of x. And then by simplifying this, we can bring the cosine over. So sine of x over cosine of x is equal to 2. Therefore, tan of x is equal to 2. So these are our two equations. And now all that's really left is to solve for our values for x. And my apologies, this is actually supposed to be from 0 to 180 degrees. 
So over here for our values of x, we can plug in sine inverse of zero, and this should equal to zero. Let's just check on our calculator. Sine inverse of zero gives us zero. So x is equal to zero in this case. Now, it can also equal to 180 degrees, I believe, because it can be in either of these two quadrants. Now over here we get tan inverse of 2 which gives this a value of let's see tan inverse of 2 oops tan inverse of 2 is equal to 63.434 so this is equal to 63.434 and tan is going to be positive in A. So it'll be positive in the first quadrant. So this is our value for x. x is equal to 63.434, which is about equal to 63.4 degrees. So for our final answer, we get that x is equal to zero degrees, 63.4 degrees, or 180 degrees. Let's look at one more example. Let's say that one plus cosine of x is equal to three times sine squared of x, and we have to solve for x to solve for x when 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 360 degrees. So once again, what we have to do is we have to simplify this using uh, the identities that we found above, and then we have to solve for our value of x. So the easiest way to do this is to get everything in terms of cosine of x and then solve a sort of quadratic equation and we know to do it in terms of cosine of x because we have sine of x squared and not cosine of x squared and that means that it's easier for us to get everything in terms of cosine of x. So using our inequality cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1 we get that sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x. So we can solve for this this gives us 1 plus cosine of x is equal to 3 times, and this is 1 minus cosine squared of x, and then we can, now we just need to simplify this and solve it quadratically. So we get, let's see, 3 minus 3 cosine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine x, 3 cosine squared of x plus cosine of x and then minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 is equal to 0. We can simplify this and we get, let's see, from 3 and 2 there's 6. So we can get 3 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x plus 2 cosine x minus 2 is equal to 0, 3 cosine of x times cosine of x plus 1 minus 2, oh this should be minus, yeah, minus 2 times cosine of x plus 1 is equal to 0, 3 cosine x minus 2 times cosine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we just need to solve for x. So 3 cosine x minus 2 is equal to 0 or cosine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Cosine of x is equal to negative 1 or 3 cosine of x is equal to is equal to 2, so we get cosine of x is equal to 
3 or 2 over 3. Now to solve for x, cosine inverse, let's do a different color. Cosine inverse of 2 over 3 gives us a value of, so cosine inverse of 2 over 3, 48.1896, 48. 7 actually. Yep. And then cosine inverse of negative 1 should be 180 degrees or 0. No, not 0. Cosine inverse of negative 1 is equal to 180 degrees. It's equal to 180 degrees. So using ASTC, so ASTC, over here cosine is positive, so it will either be in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. So x is equal to 48.2 degrees, or in the fourth quadrant it's 360 minus 48.2. So let's see. 360 minus 48.2, which gives us a value of 311.8. 311.8 degrees, and over here, it's just x is equal to 180 degrees. So for our final answer, we get that x is equal to 48.2 degrees, 311, or we should go in order, 180 degrees or 311.8 degrees.